Imagine not being able to read the paper because your hands were shaking. Imagine not being able to read newsprint as your world faded to black. The National Federation of the Blind, Newsline Indiana. With your host, Lee Martin, and co-host, Florence Myers McSwine. We want to welcome you to the National Federation of the Blind Newsline Show. Uh, this is a show that we have in the state of Indiana, and um, it's an audio information service that we're talking about, and it's a service that allows individuals that are blind, visually impaired, those that are in print challenge, including those with certain forms of dyslexia, the deaf blind, those that have shaking hand syndrome, uh, to access over 500 publications to uh, the individuals that can subscribe to this program and use it readily. This is a great tool uh, to those of you that have sight. It may sound a little frivolous, but to those of us that uh, require this particular service to have access to printed materials, it means the world to us. So Florence, would you talk a little bit about the magazines and publications that we have with the NFB Newsline, Indiana? Sure, Lee. Um, there are various magazines, and I, I know I say it every show, but there's a magazine for everyone. Um, I want to start with AARP magazine because that's a magazine that I read frequently, and um, it gives me a lot of information about uh, things that pertain to me as a senior. Um, there's Best Recipes magazine for people who like to cook. Um, magazines for people um, who are diabetic get more information. WebMD is a great source of information. Shape magazine is an excellent source as well. And then there is um, Stone Soup magazine, which a lot of children enjoy reading. Yes, children um, really enjoy reading those yes, magazines as they well. Do. And, uh, they also enjoy writing in to that particular um, magazine so that they can have their publications or their writings published. Uh, it's an international uh, publication, correct? Mm -hmm. It is. So uh, we do have children that use that, and hopefully they'll get their articles published in uh, the Stone Soup magazine. Uh, we also have newspapers uh, throughout the country and around the world. We also have breaking news. So uh, stay tuned to us and, and pay attention to our commercials because they have all the information that you need. And we have individuals from throughout the state of Indiana on those commercials letting you know the value of this particular service to them and their daily lives. So we'll be right back with our guests that we have uh, for the first show in May. And I'm sure that She'll get inside your head. So we'll be right back. Stay tuned. I'm Danny Wayne Beamer, Program Manager of the Elder Blind Program at the Will Center in Terre Haute, Indiana. I introduce the NFB Newsline to seniors in 13 southwestern counties in Indiana. I also utilize the NFB Newsline for my radio station public affairs shows. The NFB Newsline. Experience it today. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are I just graduated college as a blind student. How can I independently find job listings? Thanks to the National Federation of the Blind, visually impaired Hoosiers can hear newspapers, circulars, and magazines from across the globe. It is a fantastic service. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are the nation's blind, and we read NFB Newsline.
welcome to the National Federation of the Blind Newsline Indiana show. We are um, happy that you have joined in with us today and we have our special guest this week, Ms. Michelle Schaefer uh, for Bosma Counselor, I mean for Bosma Enterprises and um, Michelle, uh, you are a uh, licensed clinical social worker and I work as an adjustment counselor at Bosma in the Rehabilitation Center. So. Well, welcome to the show, Michelle. Thank you. And Michelle, um, I also want to welcome you to the show and thank you for taking the time out to come in and share with uh, our viewers and listeners um, across the state. Um, great information that we'll be sharing today. So um, how long have you been um, in the um, mental health field? I have 32 years of experience. I spent a lot of that working with juveniles who were incarcerated, then community mental health, and then working at Bosma with folks who are new to vision loss, helping them get adjusted and going back to work. Okay, so what, um, how did you get, uh, inspired you, what inspired you to get into the mental health field? Uh, I met some other people who worked in it, and I took a few classes, and I learned that I like learning about why people do things, how they do things, what helps them to change. And it's a way of helping people improve their quality of life from all different kind of walks of life. Okay, with your so. 18 years in juvenile, juvenile corrections, uh -huh. um, how did that go for you? Well, initially they were a little fearful because they never had anybody with a disability work there and they were a little fearful of that. but. The person who was in charge said, if we have a problem with that, we have a bigger problem than you. And her belief was that the kids would learn from that, that learn that people, when they have challenges, can overcome, and that they would be fine with that, and they were. Uh, I never had any incidents of anything happening. Okay, so, so you yeah. mentioned your disability. Sure. Um, you know, uh, what disability are you coping with? I was born two and a half months early, weighing two pounds, and they, they had to give you oxygen, of course, and they weren't able to measure how much they gave to you. So it did some damage and resulted in cerebral palsy. So I have been, I've had a disability since birth. So have you um, always been in a wheelchair from that? Or? Yes, Okay. predominantly. I would occasionally use walker crutches a little bit, but not for any substantive time, so always in the wheelchair. Wow, so from childhood, I mean, all your life, that's what yes. you know, basically. Yes. Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm, I admire that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, some of your, 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 your transformations, your, dis, you know, your, your mm -hmm. difficulties. Sure. And, and some of the challenges which you have with preconceived conditions. Right. Uh, and you just spoke of one, and um, it seems as though, um, um, working in your first 18 years, mm -hmm. um, that at least you had um, individuals or um, a business that understood. Right, and that was before the ADA laws were in effect, and so there was no guideline for how they interviewed you or what happened. And uh, a person said, we're, we're fair here, above all else. And she said to me, let's give it 90 days. If it works, good. If it doesn't, we'll part ways. Well, so you're and a trailblazer. So, yeah, I got, maybe. Um, <laughs> I never knew people didn't go to work. It never occurred to me that that wouldn't happen, but now I know differently. But then, you know, it was difficult finding work, of course. But you never know when you're going to meet that person who is fair like that and says, I want somebody to have a chance. So after the 18 years um, there, mm -hmm. uh, so you had seven more years in um, uh, mid Mental health, community mental yeah, health? Yeah, Cummins Mental Health, and that was like a therapist for adults and children with things like bipolar, schizophrenia, depression, anxiety. And I had a caseload of about 135 clients over those years, and so you learn a lot day to day just trying to help people so improve. Being, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, youth to yeah. adult? Yeah, the correctional environment changed, and they were not as focused on treatment for a period of time, and so I didn't want to be involved in that without that going on. And I switched over to a full-time treatment environment. It was a big transition, <laughs> for sure. Um, so, and then I transitioned again to come to Bosma, where I am now. 
Okay, so, so you're an adjustment counselor advisor? Yes. And what does that uh, entail, being an adjustment counselor? When people are new to vision loss or blindness, they come there to learn daily living things, computer skills, other things like that to get ready to go back to work. But my piece of that is helping them move forward in the grieving of what they've lost, um, dealing with some depression and anxiety, usually helping them get a better handle on that and building what I would call a future orientation, what's next instead of what used to be, helping them transition over to that. And so that's what I attempt to do every day in individual therapy and in groups as well. Okay. No. So what would you consider to be the key factors in um, getting um, the individuals to adjust to uh, coping with blindness or with asthma? Some of it has to do with how well they've just adjusted to other things. What skills do they bring to that experience? How much support do they have? Uh, how much time have they had to get used to it? And then getting a vision for a future because most people have no idea what the future is going to be at that point. Uh, so they're looking for any idea of what, what's possible so they know what to latch onto and move into. Uh, but frequently they've been at home for about a year to 18 months before they get there trying to figure it out. Um, so, And that can be a daunting task yes. without even knowing. Um, what resources are available to you and not knowing the depth of blindness itself initially. Mm -hmm. So uh, most people come in uh, to uh, your office, would you say um, um, they're dealing with a lot of trials and They're very um, traumatized despair? for sure. And, and usually highly anxious because they're out of their home environment and it's all different. There's all these people, they don't know what's going to happen and they don't have any hope about a future. And I think that that's a key to getting better for anybody, anything, is you gotta know that there's something out there for you to move toward. And so right away, we're gonna try to show that by the people around them, by exposing them to you guys and other folks who are out there doing everyday life really well, so they can latch onto that a little bit and then start dealing with the depression and anxiety and just grief over what was lost. Yeah, because um, I myself um, felt that grief. Yeah. And um, I still miss the sight of me. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know? And I think a lot of people want to call that depression, and in fact, it's a little different. Because mm -hmm. grief is supposed to happen when you lose something. It's a normal process. It has to be walked through a little bit, and it doesn't go in a straight line. It kind of comes and goes. As you said, you know, some days it gets better, and then there are moments when big events happen or something important or something really challenging, it can come back. And so just helping them to have the skills to manage that a little better. Now, do you also assist the families um, in this capacity? Yes, if they'd like to. We have Saturday programs where families are welcome. They're always welcome to be at the center if they want to. And if they want to have counseling, I always will offer that to them if they want to come in the evening because of work or something else. We will do that if they want to because they're adjusting as well. Everything changes. Mm. And everybody's trying to get back to what was when in fact you're gonna have to create a new kind of normal yeah, yeah, and move to something exactly. different. And not something bad, but something different. And so they have to stop reaching to make it exactly how it was and make something good out in front of them. And uh, that's a process to understand and to walk through, I think, as you know, so. Okay, well we're gonna take a short break and uh, come back and talk with uh, Ms. Schaefer a little bit more. And uh, stay tuned, because we have some very interesting conversation coming up. See you shortly. Thousands of Indiana residents feel isolated from the world due to vision problems. Thanks to the National Federation of the Blind, visually impaired Hoosiers can hear newspapers, circulars, and magazines from across the globe. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I'm blind. I read Stars and Stripes on NFB Newsline. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. Subscribe free to NFB Newsline. 
If you or someone you know is visually impaired or print challenged, the National Federation of the Blind has a resource you need. Wow, I scored a touchdown when I found sports on NFB Newsline. I enjoy reading TV guide listings on NFB Newsline. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are the nation's blind. We read NFB Newsline. It's free. Welcome back to the National Federation of the Blind Newsline, Indiana. And uh, we are going to continue our conversation with our special guest today, Michelle Schaefer from Bosnia Enterprises. And Michelle, again, uh, thank you for being our guest. Thank you for having me here. Um, Michelle, now, do you believe that uh, as being a counselor with a disability has uh, impacted the, uh, your, uh, I don't want to say influence, but the way you, um, your, um, your clients mm -hmm. uh, receive you? Yeah, no, some of their experiences are going to be very different. I never wanted to say that I exactly understand all of that, but there are pieces of it that are very similar. I'm out in public every day with a disability. I've grown up through different stages of my life and had to make different adjustments. I know about how people react. I know what some of the barriers are, but I don't ever say to them that I entirely understand that experience. It's, it's not the same. In fact, probably nobody's experience is the same from one person to the next. But I think some of it, certainly I can understand that it's not a linear process and there's no simple way to go through it that I know and everybody has to kind of find their own path. And so that's really, really important to me that I not even treat all of them the same. Um, they come with different ideas of what they want, how they are. Those things play into how we respond to all kinds of things. So yeah, I think it helps to a degree. It doesn't mean that it's a full understanding of all of it for certain. And I never wanted to say that uh, because I don't think people buy that mm -hmm. very much. But, but I think certain pieces of it, yeah, it lends to helping understand some of it, yeah. Well, that means you have to be very skilled and uh, adapting to different individuals and um, where they come from, their backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And some people might also have addictions or other issues going on. It's not a single issue. Yeah, that so, would make yeah. it even more difficult. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's an adjusting on my part every day too. <laughs> So, okay. yeah. Now, as far as Bosma Enterprises are concerned and uh, uh, with you in that capacity, and, and it sounds like you're doing a great job over there, um, have there been cases uh, where you have to go outside uh, to uh, yeah. maybe even, even deeper than, than, than what you're able to offer? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes people will need medication and things like that. We certainly don't do that. And sometimes I need to use other people at Bosma sometimes for some clients as well. I'm not a parent who's been visually impaired. They're going to need to talk to someone who's done that. Those kind of things, we can use other resources. Or, you know, some people have needed physical therapy. They go outside for that. Additional services through the Re Rehabilitation Hospital of Indianapolis if they have brain injury. Yeah, yeah, there's no way one set of people could do that whole thing. And really their time at Bosma is the first piece of adjusting. They will have much adjusting to do as they go forward outside of there. So it's an early piece of their recovery. It's not the entirety of it for sure. Now, is there um, a particular time frame um, that you're able to offer those services once a person initially comes into uh, the, the program at Bosma uh, for rehabilitation? Generally, they're there between four and six months. If someone has more severe disabilities, it might take a little longer. It might also be that they start there and then we connect them to all kinds of resources as they go forward. But generally, they're there four to five months, I would say. And what age group is generally there? Uh, 18 and up. 18 and, and up. And we've had people way into their 70s. Um, as long as they're interested in returning to work, that's the key or college, college or work. Um, that's what brings them there. There's no age limit, but they cannot be under 18, so. Okay, and um, Michelle, now back from, um, 
from Basla Enterprises, but you personally, mm -hmm. um, you being a um, disabled mm -hmm. individual, what would you consider to be one of your, um, I guess, um, biggest challenges? Um, I think oftentimes you don't have anybody in front of you to see how they did something, so you have to make your own path all the time. And, and I think that's true of the people who come to Bosmas sometimes too. They need people who've done it before them to see what did they do, how did that go? How did they get a job? How much money can they make? What did they do about transportation? Whatever little thing. You have to kind of always be learning and digging up ideas of how to solve problems. Um, so it's different than the average person who gets up every day and doesn't think about any of those things probably. It's a given and it's, it's never going to be a given for me necessarily. Um, if a piece of equipment breaks, <laughs> I'm going to have to think fast. Mm -hmm. And so those things can be challenging. And it's expensive for sure, equipment and, and tools. And, and same thing for people who come to Bosma. There's a lot of things that they need, and a lot of it is expensive to get a hold of. Mm -hmm. So, Now, you are speaking of equipment. Um, you are a wheelchair user mm -hmm. and you drive. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, can you tell us the process of attaining a driver's license uh, through the state of Indiana? Yeah. Is it the same? Yeah, it's the same drive? process, but like Crossroads Easter Seals has a special driver's training program and they'll fit you for the right equipment for you because everybody has different equipment. And then there's a place that sells the vans with the ramp and those equipment already in them. If you are not employed, you can go through Voc Rehab and get assistance with some of those things. If you are employed, you're gonna to need to purchase those probably on your own. So figuring out the van would be about $52,000. And a, a cheap wheelchair would be around 12,000. So you're looking at figuring that out as well. And of course there's resources, but it depends. Your situation might be different for any of that, um, but if the van goes down to rent one is $140 a day, now, just an example. You, you mentioned that um, uh, voc vocational rehabilitation services mm -hmm. may assist. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, do you still have to meet the qualifications of being a, a student or seeking employment? Right, so if you are employed, that is not gonna be probably a source of assistance to you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think they have a criteria even then, I'm not sure of all the details of that, but I think they serve the most severely disabled folks first. So mm -hmm. if you don't fit into that criteria, it might be a while before you would get some assistance. But. So would that be the same for um, uh, this order of selection that vocational rehabilitation has um, yes. uh, kind of been placed into? I think it happened about a year and a half ago or so, I don't know. Yes. And it changed the way services are provided. Previously, even if you were employed, you could get assistance with some things. I don't think you can now. And so therefore, people that are initially blind and um, trying to find services uh, mm -hmm. to get rehabbed, mm -hmm. um, they can no longer go to vocational rehab uh, if they don't have a um, uh, seeking a college education or employment. Yeah, they cannot be under homemaker status and just trying to be independent at home. So what are happening with those individuals that are in desperate need uh, at this critical time in their life and uh, kind of being, you know, cast away. Well, I think it's important to note if you were newly blind, you might not even know if you wanted to go to work or school. So how would they know to make that decision and decide that before they get any assistance, you know? So I think that's a big hole to say to people, oh, you can get assistance if you are going to work or school, but how do they know that just yet if this has just happened to them? Um, so that's an issue, but I think they can get assistance if they're newly blind frequently They're going to fall into voc rehab still, but only if they're going to work or school um, For people who are not in that category. We have just a couple of one-week programs where we train them in the basics It's a grant funded program and it's open to people who would fall into that not working or school category But it's just a week long with some very urgent kind of assistance you would need 
Yeah, and I, I really do appreciate that portion of Bosma Enterprises. I mean, certainly, um, it's not what we would want, but it's right. right. It's not what you want, but it's a little something, mm -hmm. and uh, we participate in those, yeah. and um, uh, we encourage individuals that um, um, that are listening or or a family member that may be viewing this to um, um, contact Bosma Enterprises, and their number will be uh, scrolling across the screen. So we're going to take a short break and come back and talk a little bit more uh, with uh, Ms. Michelle Shaker. The National Federation of the Blind knows that blindness is not the characteristic that defines you or your future. Every day we raise the expectations of blind people because low expectations create obstacles between blind people and our dreams. You can live the life you want. Blindness is not what holds you back. I am a blind vendor, and one of the things that I truly miss is reading Vending Times magazine. Hoosiers can hear Indiana magazines, circulars, national magazines, and information from across the globe. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. It is a fantastic service. Subscribe free to NFB Newsline today. We want to welcome you back for the conclusion of our show today, and I trust that you have learned quite a bit. We have a little bit more information to share with you, so Florence, would you uh, get started on that? Sure. Uh, Michelle, you have uh, given us a lot of great information, and on the conclusion of our show, uh, what would you like the, uh, our viewers to know? I think that they need to know there's an opportunity to do everything you want to do. It's a matter of getting the skills, getting the resources, and having enough support to do that and not to limit their future over something that has happened, be it vision loss or other disability, but to pursue what they want and not to let other folks define that because they might try to um, tell you which directions you can go or what you may do, but pursue what you want, but be skilled, be prepared and, and do the hard work of that. It's not gonna just come into your lap. Um, it's hard work. It's it's persistence, and so keep going. And keep going. And keep going. So we're going to keep going, and um, we just want you to um, understand that you can contact Bosma Enterprises uh, here locally, and you can also contact the National Federation of the Blind uh, for conditions uh, dealing with blindness. So, and there's a lot of other resources, and uh, we will try to post those resources so that you guys can uh, know where to go to seek the critical help that you require. So we want to say thank you once again, Michelle, and uh, we trust that you have a great day, and we'll be looking forward to sharing with you in the very near future. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, God bless. The National Federation of the Blind, Newsline, Indiana. For more information, go to nfb-in.org or call 855-963-6476. That's 855-963-6476. The National Federation of the Blind encourages you to live the life you want.